Welcome to DiscountJuicers.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. In this episode, we're going to share the two best-selling juicers that are made in Korea on this channel right now, including the best-selling Nama J2 juicer and the more recent introduction of the Kuvings Revo 830 juicer that has been taken the world by storm. This has an automatic feed chute that has been optimized to juice carrots and celery. Uh, two of the most juiced items as well as a three and a half wide feed chute that makes the whole juicing process easier. The Revo 830 is now back in stock in the United States. I made a video about it a month or two ago, link down below to that video, and it was on a basically limited supply, but now we have good inventory of them. And if you guys want to buy either of these two juicers, you guys came to the right place because I want to hook you guys up. I'm called Discount Juicers for a reason, and I'm going to hook you guys up with a 10% off discount on either of these two machines when you buy it directly from the manufacturer. At uh, Kuvings uh, USA, which the link is down below to buy the Kuvings Revo 830, or at nemoel.com, link is down below to buy the Nemoel. Check the first comment, which is pinned to the top, or the description. The links will be in there as well as the coupon code, which is DJ10, which will get you guys 10% off the Nemo or 10% off the Kuvings on the respective websites. Now make sure you use that coupon code because you guys are going to save 10%, and that's definitely going to save you a chunk of change on the Revo 830 because it actually does cost more than the Nama J2. Now besides you guys saving, that's also going to help me out because when you guys use my coupon code, Nama or Kuvings will give me a small percentage of the sale so that I can continue my work to make these educational videos for you guys. I source the juicers, I buy all the produce, and I use my expert knowledge that I've acquired over 20 years of selling juicers online and juicing for 27 years with you guys so that you guys could make the best purchase for you. The fact of the matter is both these are the, the high-end vertical auger juicers on the market at this time in the United States that they're both made in Korea. And they both have their own pros and cons, and each one is a little bit different. For some of you guys, you may think, oh man, that Nama J2 is the one for me, and some of you guys, after watching this, you're like, I don't like the Nama, I like the Kuvings, and that's all right. Either way you're going to go, you're going to be a winner because these are two of the best selling and highest quality juicers on the market and of course um, you know latest models that have come out by each of their respective companies. So in this episode I'm going to share with you guys the in-depth comparison of these two machines, why you might want to get them out, why you might want to get the Revo, um, as well as the features that each of them have and how they work, as well as the accessories that are included with each model, as well as the warranty, as well as sound testing, as well as doing an actual juice off comparison where we'll be juicing organic carrots and locally grown apples and an organic beet uh, in each of the machines to see how they perform and how much yield they make, how much pulp they put in the juice so that you guys could determine which one of these machines may be the best one for you. All right, so first we're going to go ahead and talk about the Nama J2. Now, it is no secret that my favorite juicer on the planet at this time for slow juicing and ease of use is the Nama J2. Now, that is subject to change, but I'll put a link down below to the video why the Nama J2 is my favorite juicer at this time, and I'm a juicing expert, um, and I've been juicing like 27 years, and there's 10 reasons. So link down below for that video if you guys want to watch that specifically. But the reason why I personally like the Nama J2 is because it has an automatic feed chute that basically feeds the produce into the machine so that you don't have to. Also, it has a, pro a pre-processing blade that pre-cuts the items before it goes into the juicer. So things like celery and uh, leafy greens don't necessarily clog up the outlet port and jam the juicer like it can on previous juicers out there. Uh, the reason why I like the Kuvings Revo 830 is because it actually has a specially designed feed chute. So while this has been optimized to juice basically most fruits and vegetables, uh, this could also juice most fruits and vegetables. But specifically with carrots and celery and leafy greens, you can put them in this chute where it actually will pre-cut small sections off of the celery, carrots, or leafy green stems like Swiss chard 
and feed those into the juicer so that the juicer does not clog and back up. So this will work, this will work a lot better for you guys without backup and it is said that Kuvings optimizes for higher, lo higher levels or yields of the specific produce item. Now let's not forget that Kuvings also has the largest feed chute on the planet with a three and a half inch wide feed chute here that you could drop in whole apples and just drop them in whole. You could also put whole apples in the NAMA, but for optimal use, it's always better to pre-cut the apples so you could fit more in this chamber. So you're actually gonna do a little bit less work by cutting things up more than actually loading it up more so you could trade off. But either way, these guys will make a cold press juice because these are vertical slow juicers. And the interesting thing is, both these machines run at 50 revolutions per minute so that's the same amount of speed so it'll be interesting to compare the results when the juice test is done so first i want to go over both of the companies as well as the warranty of the machine because you know these are not cheap throwaway juicers like you might buy on the you know the major websites that sell juicers for like around a hundred dollars those are made in china and those i consider throwaway juicers and those can be of questionable quality and of questionable materials that they're using to build them. Uh, know this, that both these machines are made in South Korea and I've been to both the factories that makes these machines many years ago. This one is sold by NAMA USA and NAMA is a relatively new company. Uh, this is their second model, the J2 and they have very good customer service. They've actually just recently hired more staff because they grew a lot faster than they thought they would. That being said, uh, Kuvings is more established in the United States, been selling juicers in the United States for a much longer time, and also has an established track record with customer service. So, you know, if I had to say which, who has better customer service if you need to get warranty support, like, I don't really know. I, all I know is that all my customers get warranty support and I've gotten good support from both of these companies in the past. Now let's talk about warranty. Now warranty on the J2 motor base, it has a full 15 year warranty. And over on the Kuvings, the motor base has a full <laughs> 15 year warranty as well. Now on the Kuvings, the, all the juicing parts also have a 15 year warranty, which is actually new for Kuvings because Kuvings used to only do a 10 year warranty. But with this model, their highest end model, they up their warranty to 15 years instead of the 10 on the entire machine. Meanwhile, over on the NAMA, the one thing I don't like about the NAMA <laughs> is the warranty on the parts. The warranty on the top set parts is only two years, which is, in my opinion, extremely short, and I hope that NAMA one day will increase their warranty. Uh, that being said, I do have uh, verbal confirmation from the president of NAMA that you know they intend to take care of people after the two years. How much longer after two years? I don't know, that's not in writing. You guys get two years in writing. But know this, if you guys buy directly from me at discountjuicers.com, you know, that coupon code that I mentioned earlier will not apply, but I will ensure you guys will get your warranty support for as long as I possibly could get it for you guys from the companies. I always try to offer you guys better support when you buy direct at discount juicers. But of course, I know a lot of you guys want to save the most money and that's why you guys should use the coupon code DJ10 at Namawell or DJ10 at Kuvings USA to save 10% off either one of these juicers. And once again, your support is appreciated because this allows me to make my videos so that I could tell the truth about juicers and all the companies that I represent. They respect me because they know every juicer has their pros and cons and I try to present them in the most fair and objective way as possible. So now I wanna talk about some of the accessories that come with each of the machines. Um, both these come with collection cups that are BPA free to collect the juice as well as the pulp. They both also come with pushers. I'm not going to cover those because they come with both machines. But I, what I do want to cover is some of the different things that come with the machines, including the attachments. So with the Kuvings, you get both the attachments that are available for this machine, including a sorbet sieve. So you guys could make frozen fruit sorbet, so like banana ice cream, which is basically just frozen fruits. You thaw them out a little bit, run it through the machine, it grinds them up and makes it like frozen yogurt consistency, which is amazing. And then you get the smoothie strainer if you guys want to make smoothies in your juicer. I personally think a vacuum blender is a much better device to make smoothies 
but you could use this smoothie sieve to make smoothies. Um, when you're using the smoothie sieve, it does not eject the pulp out of the bottom, so this cannot be used as a coarse juicing screen. So I want you guys to note that. And then over on the NAMA J2, at present time, it comes with the coarse screen, which is actually kind of similar to the one on the Kuvings, but this one does have a hole in the bottom, so I believe that NAMA says you could use this for juicing fruits or maybe even making things like uh, smoothies in it. That being said, the NAMA does not include, at present time, when this video is being filmed, a sorbet screen. But I do know, and I don't even know if I should be telling you guys this, I do know that NAMA is working on a sorbet screen. The reason why I know this is because <laughs> I have a, a beta test version of their sorbet screen. I don't know if this is going to be the real one, um, but they are working on it and will come out with one. That being said, depending on when you buy this, it probably will not come with this screen because it's probably going to take them at least several more months from the time this video is being published for them to come out with one. So the next items I want to discuss are the cleaning brushes. So, you know, the Kuvings is a premium model with a premium price tag, so it does come with some more accessories. So I give that definitely to Kuvings. And Kuvings not only gives you guys one cleaning brush, which is like what the NAMA does, it gives you like an oversized kind of toothbrush to scrub out the screen and all the parts and whatnot. Um, Kuvings actually gives you three cleaning brushes. So, you know, this, this is like the best cleaning brush setup you could use like this one to like get in here and get all the hard to reach places with the oversized toothbrush. You have like a, a, a round brush which is perfect for kind of like you know brushing inside here. Actually NAMA should include one too because it kind of could get in here nice and easy too. <laughs> and then Kuvings also has the screen cleaning tool so I hope that NAMA and other companies will come out with a screen cleaning tool because you could just take the screen cleaning tool put it on and then you rotate this and as you guys can see, it quickly and easily allows you to clean your screen because it has a set of six different uh, brushes in here. Whereas normally with like the NEMA, you would have to just take this small brush and brush all the way around. Um, I always brush inside and outside. On this brush, if I'm doing this brush, I'll brush on the outside with this. And then I still will take the other brush and brush on the inside to make sure all the holes get clean. You want to make sure and you clean this, clean the screens right after you're done juicing because if uh, pulp clogs in your screens and then hardens, that will reduce the performance of your juicer over time. So yeah, definitely like the included brushes with the Kuvings over the NAMA. Another part that comes with the Kuvings that I think more companies should do, and Kuvings is the only company currently doing this, is they actually, actually they give you a wrench. This is a wrench that can be quite indispensable uh, if you actually improperly use your juicer and load things in too quickly into it, right? This wrench allows you to basically put it on this little um, tab here that they built in so that now you can easily remove the top set. What happens in some cases, I know this happened to some of you guys, especially if you don't pre-cut your produce like celery, leafy greens, um, uh, and you feed them in too quickly, uh, the, basically the auger gets jacked up which then push all the parts up against the uh, feed chute which th now you can't get this off because you, you you only have to use your hands but with this you get a lot better leverage to basically take it apart so this is actually only for emergency use and this is only if you should make a mistake and not use the juicer properly under normal situations you will be able to just basically take the juicer apart without any tool that being said, over on the NAMA, they do not include this tool. I think I've only jammed my NAMA once so bad that I actually had to really, you know, get in there and unjam it. It's been designed so well that in general, except for very small, rare instances, it will not clog or jam up, and you will be able to hand disassemble this every single time. That being said, for emergency use, I think, you know, having some kind of setup like this could be quite beneficial because it literally just takes your customer service to the next level and will prevent somebody from calling the company when you do have it clogged and they're like saying, I can't get this apart, it's stuck, what do I do? And then maybe they're gonna have to send you a whole new replacement unit if they can't help you out. But if you know if they had a wrench, they could just basically you could un get it undone yourself 
without any hassle and be back up and running in no time. Now, of course, another item that comes with both machines are recipe books. Not every juicer comes with recipe books, so I'd encourage you guys, especially if you guys are new into juicing, to get a juicer that comes with a recipe book. This will save you from going out and buying a recipe book for another, you know, 10 or $20. And the Nama comes with the Nama recipe book, and the Kuvings comes with the Kuvings recipe book. Um, both these recipe books are great recipe books. They kind of go into more than just juicing, but they talk about philosophy and some of the benefits in different fruits and vegetables and uh, produce substitutions and herbs and spices and everything, which is really nice. Now, the Nama recipe book is about 70 pages long, approximately, and it has basically a, like, um, it has like one recipe on one side and then basically a nice picture on the other side. Whereas the Kuvings is a lot more better laid out, in my opinion. Basically, it's like 100 pages, and the recipes, you know, they'll have basically a picture on this side and sometimes two recipes on here. So not only is this recipe book longer, but you also get more recipes with the Kuvings on things that you guys can try. Of course, I come up with my own recipes, and I encourage you guys to come up with your own recipes. Links down below to my video, you know, how to become a juice recipe expert. <laughs> um, and also my video on juicing fruits for giving you guys some information on the best ways to juice fruits so that they can be as healthy as possible. So yeah, on the recipe book setup, I'd say the Kuvings wins. And in general with the accessories, the Kuvings also wins this category. All right, next what I want to do is I want to go ahead and take the machines apart, part by part to show with you guys how each of the machines work, how they're the same, and how they are different. All right, so on the Kuvings, basically, you could pull out the whole top set, just like so, and over on the Nama, you could pull out the whole top set. The Kuvings can be disassembled on top of the juicer and assembled on top of the juicer, whereas the Nama must be disassembled and assembled while it is off the juicer. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and pull off the feed chute of the Kuvings. So as you guys can see, there's a smaller feed chute. I think that's like a one and a quarter inches in diameter. And then you have this uh, flip gate where you can just flip this little clip and it just pops up. So you guys now have a three and a half inch wide feed chute to feed in large apples. This is the largest feed chute on any juicer that I'm aware of. And this works in a traditional way where you actually just gotta put the produce in one at a time and let the machine process it and juice it. Over on the Nama, it has a more unique design, and this is the design I prefer because I've been feeding produce and juicers for like 27 years and I'm over it. Um, this has actually a hopper design. So, you know, the hopper design actually is a little bit less tall than the Kuvings. And how this works is you basically press this little clip, you open up this top here, and then inside here you load up this little hopper area. I think it holds approximately like uh, two liters. And then what happens is at the bottom, there's a processing blade. I mean, you guys can see that little blade there. This processing blade will then uh, spin around, cut up little bits of produce, and then allow it to drop into this, through this little hole here. And then it gets into the auger and then is juiced. So this is like literally the game changing technology. You can literally fill this hopper up. And in many cases, when juicing vegetables, you can make about 24 ounces of juice if you have a full hopper. And in some fruits, you could make about 32 ounces of juice, such as when juicing watermelons or something like papayas. So you can make from 24 to 32 ounces of juice, filling it up, shutting the lid, and literally walking away. Whereas with this machine, you gotta sit there and continually feed things into the machine. So that's the benefit of the J2. All right, next coming out, we got the augers. This is the auger on the Kuvings. It's a lot larger than on the Nama J2. Um, and the main reason for this is because the way this works, this is their, new, their newly designed auger for the Revo. This top section here with this flat part is the part that basically will chunk off a small bit of carrots or celery or anything you put in that ex the smaller feed chute so that little pieces are chunked off at a time so that you do not overload the juicer. And then of course this bottom area could basically accept the whole apple and crush it up in one fall swoop. So that actually will probably be a more faster processing time than the Nama that actually has to pre-cut it and then drop it down a smaller hole and then go into this auger and then juice it. So this could probably process produce a little bit faster, but then once again, you are feeding it in yourself. Um, this uses their same uh, juicing auger system, the bottom half anyways, 
as their previous uh, two models, the C7000 and Evo 820, as far as I'm aware. It doesn't look like they changed the bottom parts of this too much, just updated the top of the auger and actually made the motor a lot more powerful than the previous version. Now, both these augers have, you know, um, places, in recesses on the bottom. Don't be alarmed when, when you're done juicing. There's pulp underneath here. It is designed to collect pulp underneath there. So don't be alarmed when that happens. Plus, you'll also see on the NEMA J2 auger, there's a lots of divots in the auger. And I'm like, hmm, what are the divots for? I mean, I know they use divots in golf or something. But <laughs> the divots on the auger are help to keep the juicer a bit quieter when juicing. So that's quite interesting. And uh, we'll be testing to see which one of these two machines grinds a little bit better when we do the juice off test. And both these, th these augers are made out of the GE Ultim material, which are eight times harder than augers on previous juicers and even other juicers from China. Next coming out, we got the juicing screen and the automatic wiping blade on the Kuvings. And here is the one on the Nama J2. They're both very similar. We'll pull off the wiping blade uh, first and go over those. And the wiping blade on the Nama J2, basically it has two silicone wipers. Wipes the outside of the bowl and the inside, which wipes the screen. Uh, while this does look like it has four, two of these are blank and don't do anything. They're just solid plastic and two of them are actually the wipers. Whereas on the Kuvings, they actually have uh, three. And so this is going to be a little bit longer to clean because now you got to brush down the outside and inside of each of the wipers whereas on the NAMA you just got the two you know um, on bo both sides in addition you know on both these machines you're also going to have the little gearing I always like to scrub that down because um, you're going to get uh, mineral deposits you know in there and carotenoid stains in there so I always brush those down some people just rinse it off and then you may get you know uh, staining and uh, d you know uh, over time but yeah, both these machine, both these parts seem pretty similar. If I had to say one's a bit more durable, I'd say actually the uh, the NAMA part feels a little bit more durable on the wiping blade. And then getting down to the juicing screen, the major difference here is the way you put them in and align them. On the Kuvings, you have a little red dot on the top that you need to align with a red dot on the juicing bowl. This is the original method for aligning the juicer parts, whereas the NAMA kind of has the next level design. So they have actually these little um, protrusions with like a little half moon. This is a bigger one, this is a smaller one, and that basically will correspond with the half moon smaller and bigger in the juicing bowl. So that's actually a lot easier because like you just, oh, that's the big one, that's the big one, I just drop it in, whereas this, you have to line the dot with the dot, you know, and it's a little more difficult to kind of line up in there. Now the other thing you guys are going to see on the bottom of this screen, it's completely open, whereas on the bottom of this screen, it is completely closed. So, you know, that's a pro and a con on each one. I prefer the open screen on the NAMA J2 because now I could clean with the cleaning brush from the top and clean with the cleaning brush from the bottom to get in there to clean, you know, the uh, inside easily on the NAMA J2. That being said, because it is open on the bottom, that means that there's going to be more pulp resi residual waste in the bottom of the juicing bowl. Whereas on the Kuvings, all the excess pulp when you're done juicing will be stuck inside the screen because it does not allow it to come out of the screen. So that makes this part a lot easier to clean. That being said, this part will be a little more difficult to clean because there will be more residue in there. Plus, you could kind of access the brush from the top. Um, but then not from the bottom easily. So yeah, cleaning the bottom row of the, this bottom screen is a bit difficult because this bottom row is recessed uh, from the um, top of this like little bushing thing. It kind of has like a little gully here, so it's a bit harder to clean the bottom uh, row of the screen on the Kuvings. Now the other thing is that on the Kuvings, there's actually a nice large hole where the pulp is ejected. And over on the NAMA J2, actually the hole is smaller. So while the NAMA J2 has actually rarely ever jammed up on me when I'm juicing, um, you know, it's probably more unlikely to clog or jam up on the Kuvings because the ejection porthole is a lot larger. 
but that because of the ejection port hole is larger that also may affect the yield and you may not get as much yield as the smaller hole because it actually acts as a constrictor to keep the juice pulp in the juicer longer so that you get a higher yield. Um, let's see if we just compare the holes on the juicing screen I mean they're pretty similar just looking at it with my naked eye if I had to say anything maybe the holes on the uh, Kuvings look to be maybe a little bit smaller than on the Nema J2 on uh, both screens maybe the bottom screen may be similar I don't know it's, it's really hard to tell so but we will test to see how much pulp each juicer puts into the machine let's, let's go ahead and compare the juicing bowls the juicing bowl on the Kuvings is a little bit more heavy it has some uh, gearing apparatus underneath so that it could actually spin the wiping blade um, in addition the Kuvings actually has a much larger pulp port where the pulp comes out and it's actually a fairly uh, short run actually and there is no silicone flap on here which makes it easier to clean over on the juice side there is a pulp um, cap that actually is new and improved and a little more heavy duty than their previous version so you can close that to keep the pulp inside the machine and as I said inside here when you're done juicing will be really easy I mean it's a flat surface on the bottom so it's a lot easier to clean than the Nama J2 version so the Nama J2 actually has a more square outlet where the juice comes out actually I'd rather clean a round outlet where the juice comes out so this is a bit more difficult to clean honestly the square it also has a spout cap I kind of like the design of the spout cap on the Nama J2 because it just has the hinge at the top. Whereas this has like this whole apparatus that kind of goes around, um, you know, the spout and actually can even come off. So, you know, it's just like extra plastic and extra things that uh, may break. And I've actually, I've broke those before. Um, over on the J2, um, actually, this is not flat on the bottom. So there's a little um, volcano thing here that comes up from the bottom so you'll have to reach in here with a brush to clean it not super hard to clean but granted the Kuvings will be easier to clean in this area in addition you also have the wiping gear which actually the Kuvings also does have and then uh, finally on the Nama J2 it also has a nice pulp port so let's go ahead and show you those guys the pulp port on the Kuvings is actually a lot larger than on the Nama J2 now the pulp port on the Nama J2 is easier to clean because you just flip this little lever, drop this down, and now you could easily get in there. Now this is a longer run, and this is a shorter run, but it's a lot kind of easier to access um, the shorter run because it's larger. But once you open this up, it's game changing because it's just easy to you know wash both sides. Now this does have a silicone flap, and if you are prone to use, losing small little parts, you might want to get the Kuvings because it does have does not have a flap that being said this this flap does keep some back pressure on the produce which means you may end up getting a higher yield on the Nama J2 and we'll be testing that in just a little bit and I think that's it for uh, both these parts of course all the juicing parts are claimed by both companies to be BPA free all right finally we are down to the motor bases themselves on both of the machines um, the Kuvings Revo 830 motor base is the best of class motor that Kuvings has ever put in to a home juicer. I believe it has like 40% more torque than their previous version. In addition, this has a 45 minute runtime or duty cycle, which means you should use it. You can use it for up to 45 minutes before you should turn it off and let it rest and cool down before using it more. And it also pulls 240 watts and is this, this base is more heavy, so if you want something lighter, if you want to go for the Nama, um, but this is a lot heavier duty motor with more copper windings, which tells me that it's probably more powerful in some ways. Over on the Nama J2, this is still quite a heavy motor, definitely not one of the Chinese ones that are super light. Um, you know, this motor has never failed me. Um, this only has a 30 minute duty cycle. Uh, so you can only run this 30 minutes before you should turn it off and rest and then before you turn it on and then continue juicing. That being said, I have juiced for up to an hour without issues. The other thing is that this only consumes 200 watts of power. So does that mean that's 40 watts more? Is it more powerful? I haven't seen the torque or horsepower specs on the machine on the motors. That being said, the torque spec, in my opinion, is more important than just the sheer horsepower specification. 
and in my opinion, um, you know, I've used the NAMM a lot and it's never really had an issue with torque other than when I did the first initial video, link down below to that, and I was juicing corn on the cob, something you shouldn't be juicing. And if you guys are on a solar system, right, you probably want to get the NAMM J2 because it pulls less watts and it's going to allow your solar system to, you know, power more things than, you know, more of an energy hog, actually, you'll probably save a little bit of electricity too if you guys are want to be more miserly and have a cheaper electricity bill. Now the other thing that I like to mention is that on the NAMA J2 it has a standard removable cord, an IEC cord, I don't know if you guys can see that right there, but I really like that a lot. It just allows me to unplug it when I'm done and just lift up the whole machine and take it and put it away. Whereas on the Kuvings it has a fixed cord that actually does not come out. You have to pull the cord out and then you got the cord dangling. So I really love the IEC cord because a lot of the high-end juicers these days uses this kind of cord. So I always leave the cord like in my kitchen plugged in and I just move the juicer out of the way with the Kuvings. You got to remove the cord, you know, that's dangling and kind of getting a little bit messy and then you have to put the juicer away. So yeah, not a big deal. And then uh, the switches, this has a nice uh, switch on the side of the machine, forward, um, push down, off, and then a momentary contact reverse. This is a more rocker switch, standard style. They've been using on slow juicers since they came out. And uh, NAMA took it to the next level and kind of did like a rotary switch. So you can do a rotor rotary, like turn it to one side to reverse. The middle is off and then you turn it to the other side, which is fixed and locks into place to turn it on and to run the juicer. So yeah, I mean, of these, I'm not a big, I don't really care either way on these switches. I mean, the switches work as long as they don't break, I'm good with it. Uh, but the control on the NAMA is actually on the front of the machine and the control on the Kuvings is on the side. Now one of the things I want to talk to you guys about is the built-in safety system on both machines. And actually I gotta give that to the Kuvings. The Kuvings actually has an invisible safety system, meaning they're using some kind of magnet uh, system, magnet detection. So that means the motor top is more waterproof because there's like literally no holes that water or juice can seep into if you should make a mistake and splash water on this or something like that. Whereas on the NEMA J2, it does have a nice moat here, but it does have a standard uh, mechanical switch that may be more prone to failing than a you know magnetic style switch. That being said, I've ha I have had magnetic switches fail in the past as well. Um, but you know if you should splash water in here, um, you know it may compromise the switch. That being said, that shouldn't really be possible because the water should drain out the side before it gets into the switch. So yeah. And then both these machines will not turn on unless they are properly assembled. So actually with that, let's go ahead and teach you guys how to properly assemble both machines. I think I will assemble the NAMA J2 first. Uh, first, we're going to go ahead and take the juicing screen and the wiping blade and just uh, drop that in there. And then we're going to go ahead and line up these little pegs on the top with the pegs inside the screen. So the large one and the small one to each. Then we're going to drop in the auger. And then we're going to go ahead and take this main top set. And we're going to look for this little line on the back. It's opposite the handle where you're holding it. And very important, you're going to want to look for this line on the side of the a juicing bowl and you want to align this just to the side of the of the uh, of this line here this protrusion and then lock it into place one of the biggest complaints and what I see with a lot of customers when they get the NAMA they're so excited and they just take this and they just fit it on any old way right and you could fit this on ways other than the way it's supposed to go like the backwards way which is this way so now you have the protrusion here on the bottom and then the handle here and you put this on the top of the machine and you turn it on you're like, you send me a defective juicer, John. I didn't send a defective juicer, like you assembled it wrong so it's not coming on, right? Very important. Uh, you need to assemble this with it off the base because if you assemble this, you cannot assemble this on top of the base. If you assemble it on top of the base, the only way you can assemble it on top of the base is actually the wrong way. Right, so assemble it off the base to assemble it properly and then set it on top of the base. I hope that NEMA does change this because this is not super user friendly in my opinion. All right, and once you assemble it, you can, the machine will turn on if it's in the on position. Next, let's go ahead and assemble the Kuvings. The Kuvings can be assembled on top of the machine, so we're just going to go ahead and put the uh, bowl on. The spout always faces the front 
We're going to go ahead then and take the wiping blade and the juicing screen, lock that in. Once again, we're looking for that red dot here, the red dot here. Line those up, it drops into place. We're going to go ahead and take that big auger, drop that big black auger in there, <laughs> all the way to the bottom. And then we're going to go ahead and take this top set, and there's a little uh, dot, white dot on here that we're going to go ahead and line up with a white dot, with the red dot on the juicing bowl, and lock that into place to the lock position. Once you do that, you should be able to turn this machine on, and it will turn on. All right, now that we got both machines assembled and operating properly, let's go ahead and do a sound test to see which one is quiet, quiet, more quiet. <laughs> um, both these machines are a lot quieter than those high-speed juicers. I'm not a big fan of the high-speed juicers such as the Breville Juice Fountain Series. And I'll put a link below to the video I made with the Breville against the Nama J2, and you can see why I don't like the high-speed machines. Aside from being loud, you are literally throwing money down the drain because your pulp is so wet. And actually, I took the pulp out of the Breville, ran it back through the Nama, and made like, I don't know, 40% more juice, which is insane because the high-speed juicer was literally wasting your produce. That's why I recommend a slow juicer like one of these two fine machines that gets some of the highest yield out there. All right, so let's go ahead and do a sound test first on the Revo 830. All right, so that was running at 69 to 70. So that's what it was uh, telling me. Let's go ahead and do the NAMA J2. Alright, this was doing 68 to 69, so both these are pretty much the same noise level, and they're both super quiet. That being said, if you had to claim a winner, I'd say this one takes it by one decibel. So you guys just learned about these machines, how they're different, how they're similar, about the motors, about the warranties, about the companies that sell them in the United States, and now I want to go ahead and do an actual juice off comparison juicing even amounts of produce in both machines. So first let's go ahead and do a weigh in to make sure we have a fair fight. So now we got the produce set up on the scales and we're going to go ahead and show you guys we got a fair fight going on. All right, let's go ahead and do a close up on the scales over on the Kuving side. Looks like we got 1955 grams. And if we jet over to the Nama J2 side, we also have 1955 grams backing up so you guys we got 1955 on both scales we're juicing organic carrots apples and a beet today all right now that we got the weigh-in done we're gonna go ahead and move the scales out of the way and i think today first i'll be juicing in the kubings revo 830 because i think actually it's gonna probably take a little bit less time overall to juice although the nama is gonna probably take less time of involving me to juice if you guys get that and the other thing is I probably won't have to pre-cut anything going into the Kuvings Revo 830. And I'll let you guys know I actually got some nice fat wide carrots that uh, barely fit into the feed chute to see how the machine will process really fat carrots. So I guess without further ado, let's go ahead and start juicing. So just go ahead and turn the machine on, hit start, and we're gonna drop in that first carrot. And look at that, it's just like chunking off pieces of carrots a little bit at a time, auto feeding. The cool thing is, you know, that's almost done. We could take this large diameter apple, drop it in there, and it could actually process the apple. And look at that, chew it on up at the same time it's processing that carrot. We want to wait for this carrot to be finished, and then now we can just drop in the next carrot. Now the interesting thing is, I want to see how it's going to process this beet. Um, maybe we should wait for the carrots to process before we put the beet in because that's going to put extra stress on the auger because beets are actually nice and hard. So let's go ahead and drop the beet in there. See if it stops it or, or does anything. Yeah, just, oh, it stops. So we got to go ahead and hit the reverse and then hit forward again. We got to make sure we tap down this. Um, both these machines do not include a sieve and I'm sieving out the juice today to see how much pulp each juicer put into the juice. There's some loud noise from the Kuvings due to the beat. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and speed this part of the video up for you guys to save you guys some time. All right, 
the last carrot just went into the Revo 830. It's been pretty much uneventful aside from I could not use a sieve on top of the collection a cup like I normally do because it's just like literally filled with small fine pulp. So I actually had to dump the pulp into the uh, jar to collect it. Uh, otherwise it would have overflowed and I would have lost yield. So that was a little bit peculiar. That tells me that there's probably lots of pulp in this juice. Oh, and the, the pulp catch bin almost overflowed there on me. And so it looks like we're pretty much done. We're gonna go ahead and, let's see, turn it off and we're gonna hit, hit the stop time. Looks like that took us a total of 4.34 minutes. And it worked uneventfully other than putting the beat in. When I put the beat in, it basically just stopped the machine. I had to hit the reverse and then hit the Ford again. All right, now I'm set up and ready to juice in the Nama. Um, while we could put in the whole apples and the whole beet and just break carrots into smaller chunks and juice it, I think I want to maybe try to cut them up into a little bit smaller pieces that will allow me to more effectively load the hopper and have it maybe work a little bit better. So I guess the first step is we're going to go ahead and hit the start button here, turn this, turn this, put this up, and maybe just to start off we'll cut the apple just like in straight up in half and half again, drop that in there. Some of the easiest things to do is I just break the carrots up into pieces. That'll save a little bit of time than trying to like cut them up. And we just drop those in there too. I want to go ahead and put the bead in whole to see if it stops the uh, machine or not. We're going to go then hit cut this apple up again, once again in half and in half again. So that's quarters. Drop that in there. And we're going to go ahead and just break these carrots up into pieces and drop them in there as well. We almost fit about half of the produce in so far. And we're going to go ahead and shut the lid on the Nama and get this started and get this juicing on up. The cool thing about the Nama is once you put everything in, literally you can like walk away because the juice does all the juicer does all the work for you. Whereas on the Kuvings, I was sitting there and pushing each, it, or you know, setting each thing into the machine. And basically, I didn't have to push it because it automatically sucked it in. But yeah, hands-free juicing in the Nama J2. This is what I truly like. It allows you to now use this time to then cut up the carrots that are gonna go into the machine next. And if you want, you can even actually just dump the carrots into the little top feed chute as the machine is running to like load up that hopper even more. So we're just gonna go ahead and let the, uh, G oh, and then sometimes it might pop up so you just need to shed it again. <laughs> if you overload the hopper, that's uh, likely to happen. So I think we'll speed this part of the video up for you guys, save you guys some time. All right, so everything looks like it's pretty much done processing in the Nama J2. Um, that being said, you always want to let the machine run a bit longer after it's, you know, everything disappears because there's still produce running through the auger and the screen. If you turn the machine off prematurely, then you're gonna have a lot more waste and debris in the screen area that did not get juiced. And actually, I'm still here in the juicer, grind up some of those pieces of beets. How you'll know if it's done is if the pulp is still flowing and still moving out of the outlet port. That's your indication that the machine is still working and there still is things that it can be juiced and is juicing inside the machine. It looks like my pulp stopped uh, coming out. Also, your juice will stop pretty much too. And I would call it, I think we're pretty much done. And what we are at, we're at six minutes and 26 seconds. So in this case, the Nama J2 actually took two minutes longer to juice all the produce than the Kuvings did. But the, the fact of the matter is for user input, it actually took less user input because literally you could load up the hopper and then the machine is doing all the work for you. So that's the amazing part. And the other thing is, is that in the NEMA, I could shake down the sieve here on top and it didn't overflow with pulp, telling me that it actually put a lot less pulp into the juice than the Kuvings did. So uh, I guess the only issue I had with the NEMA, although it is only a 200 watt motor, this machine powered through the beat without stopping. I did not have to mess with the you know, reverse button like I did on the Kuvings, despite being 240 watt motor and being, at, you know, weighing more, so it has more copper uh, windings in there. What the problem I had with the J2 is if you guys saw, 
the lid would keep popping up on me. Now, this lid is a well-used lid. This is my personal juicer that I use like several times a week. And if you overload the machine, it will basically pop the lid up. Maybe my clip here is a bit worn out because it ne usually never pops up this much on me when I am juicing. That being said, I know Nama is currently working on improving their lid, which I hope, you know, the revision comes out really soon. It'll be a rolling upgrade, so it'll just actually be included as soon as they have the more heavy-duty lid that won't pop up or the, uh, the hinge will be a little more firm on it. So I am looking forward to that personally. But I like that Nama's always taking their machine to the next level when they identify an issue that previous customers have had, they'll basically make it better. Like I know they've already included making the locking clip here more stronger and you know they're working on the hinge here which are the two issues I've personally had with the Nama J2 at this time. All right, so on both machines I always like to basically tip the machine up to see if we get any last bits and last drips of juice out. That's on the Nama J2. And over on the Kuvings Rebo, let's go ahead and lift this up and tip it down. Little bit of drip, juice dripping out of the Rebo as well. We're going to go ahead and close that spout cap. And we're going to go ahead and bring these juices front and center to you guys to do a comparison on the yield. But first, we will need to have to strain the Kuvings juice because I put all the pulp into the juice. All right, so now let's go ahead and sieve out both juices. So over on the Nama J2, pretty much the sieve cut all the pulp and I was shaking it down as I went. So it's actually fairly efficient. Let's go ahead and make sure we get all this in one big kind of uh, pulp patty there. That's all sticking together so we get most of it off. All right, looks like we're pretty much done. Now with the Kuvings, it's gonna be a little bit different. We got a little pulp patty that's left inside here. So we'll start shaking it off over our a new collection cup because this is this has all the pulp in it and I guess we're just gonna go ahead and pour a little bit at a time to try and then and then let it um, and then shake it down to just separate out the pulp. Alright we finally got all that juice sieved out now while we did save two minutes in the juicing time right straining out this pulp was more of a hassle and took longer than two minutes so I just want to give you guys that heads up that being said, if you guys are looking for a more pulpy juice and you like juice with pulp in it, then guess what? Kuvings would be your winner because it definitely put a lot more pulp into the juice. I personally always use a sieve to sieve out my ju uh, juice before drinking. That's just how I personally like it. That being said, the pulp content is completely up to you. Honestly, it'd probably be a little bit healthier if you actually left the pulp in than taking it out. But some people may not like the pulp or, you know, their digestive system may not be able to deal with the pulp effectively. So, yeah, that's a choice up to you. And you will need to buy your own sieves on both these machines. All right, we pretty much got both these pulp patties shaken down. And actually, after we shook them all down and looking at it, it looks like they look pretty similar. You know, I thought the Kuvings was going to have a lot more pulp, but, you know, actually after shaking it all down, it, you know, some of it went through the holes in the sieve. So uh, next, let's go ahead and weigh out the pulp to see how much pulp each juicer put in to the juice. All right, over on the Nama J2 side, looks like we got 38 grams of pulp put in to the juice. And over on the Kuvings side, what do you think? More or less than 38. I definitely think more. And let's see how much more that actually was. 45. So, wow. Actually, not a lot more. But a lot of the pulp that went in here was a lot more finer pulp. So, I expect when I drink the juice, it's going to be a little bit different consistency. Um, I'm, I'm thinking that the pulp was probably primarily from the apples. So, yeah, that was quite interesting. That There's a lot more pulp. Um pre-straining but after straining it reduced down because the pulp was ground down to a fine particulate size so that is actually quite interesting so next let's go ahead and do a comparison up close and center for both you guys so you guys could see which juicer actually made more juice all right let's go ahead and show you guys the close-up on the yields and actually if you look at it they look almost like it's tied right but if we just zoom in and go a little bit closer, over on the Kuvings side, you could see the uh, two US pint mark. And it's actually just a tad under that mark. If we look at the uh, milliliters, you could see maybe it's at like 900 and I don't know, maybe 30 milliliters or so. 
approximately of juice so under two US pints is what I'm looking at and if we kind of go over to the NAMA J2 look at that two US pints I mean it's pretty much on the line you know and then if we look at, at this it's basically like 900 and maybe 50 milliliters of juice now I will say that the NAMA juice you know has different definitely different layering it did juice the juice last and I unlike the um, Kuvings juice that I did re-pour so it kind of actually mixed it up a little bit that's why you guys are probably seeing a little bit of the different layering effects that being said both of them made a similar amount of foam on the top and once again we did uh, double strain the Kuvings and run it through the sieve basically almost like twice um, so maybe that might have reduced the foam a little bit but for all practical purposes you know the foam is pretty much the similar thing and the juice is pretty much the same I would say maybe the the NAMA made a little bit more juice, actually not much, so that actually was quite interesting. Alright, so now what I want to do is we're going to go ahead and taste test the juice to see if they taste any different. First, over on the NAMA J2 juice. I mean, definitely a thicker juice. I'm going to say do the apples. Let me go ahead and have a little bit more of that. I wasn't tasting a whole lot of fine, like, particulate in the juice. It's a fairly clean juice but kind of reminds me a tad bit like one of those Kerr's Nectars you used to drink when you were a kid. Or anyways, I used to drink them. But, you know, not as bad as, as that. It wasn't really thick. Uh, predominantly, I believe that's due to the apples and the texture of the apples and the uh, soluble fiber that got into the juice. Next, let's go ahead and try the Kuvings juice. Mm. On this juice, I do taste more grit. So that would account for the extra fiber that was caught in the sieve. And then when I shook down the sieve, the fine grit was small enough to go through the sieve and not get caught in the sieve. So I wasn't able to weigh that. It did actually did end up going in the juice. So that would artificially inflate the yield of the juice. But it also does give it maybe a little bit different mouth feel. Some of you guys may prefer a little bit texture in juice, and honestly, that's probably a little more of the insoluble fiber that went through the juicer, came out, and went through the sieve, and now you're drinking it. Some of you guys may not want that, so in that case, you might want to go with the Nama because it actually makes a finer juice the first time through. Mm. Yeah, I can taste a lot more grit in there. But yeah, nonetheless, both these juicers made a very high-quality juice. And I cannot discern, like, other than the texture of difference, like a taste difference. They both taste pretty much the same to me. All right, so finally what I want to do for you guys is actually show you guys what you guys are going to have to clean when you're done juicing. Now, one of the tips I like to give you guys, and I've shown in the past, is you could actually close the spout cap on both machines. And you want to pour in maybe about uh, 450 milliliters of water in the machine. Let the machine kind of rotate a little while, and then you can let the water out that will help pre-clean some of the parts. That being said, today I'm not doing that because I want to show you guys for reals what's in there without any kind of pre-cleaning process. If we go ahead and take apart the Kuvings, we can take apart the Kuvings on top of the unit. You can see I actually did a fairly good job at getting all the pulp out of this top set that has been a challenge with other models in the past. It looks like they got it worked through uh, better on the new Revo 830. That being said, depending on what you're juicing, there may be a lot more uh, you know, pulp stuck in this top area that actually did not get juiced and did not go through the machine. So yeah, yours may not look like this <laughs> when you juice. Next coming out, we got the juicing auger. And actually the auger looks pretty clean to me. Now don't be alarmed when you guys look at the auger after juicing carrots and it has a green tinge. Don't think it's defective or weird. The carotenoid pigments, orange carotenoid pigments kind of blend in, kind of attach to the Ultim black auger and then it makes it kind of look like a greenish tinge. If you want this off, you could just use soap and water. If you just wash this off, it's not going to come off. You need soap and water to basically use a surfactant to pull out the carotenoids. Underneath the auger, of course, it's all full of pulp. Next coming out, we got the juicing screen and wiping blade. So the wiping blade, actually, we got some splashes on there but that's gonna be fairly easy to clean, not a lot on there. And then on the juicing screen, actually, if we look on the inside of the juicing screen, actually, there's not a lot left in there. There's a little bit at the bottom, kind of ground in, and I want you guys to carefully look at the screen on the outside, on the bottom. 
you guys can see there's a little like uh, carrot pulp like ground in to the juicing screen. This makes this juicing screen a little bit harder to clean than others on the market due to the ground in pulp. I'm not a fan of the ground in pulp uh, personally. And on the juicing bowl this part is basically easy to clean. There's like no residues left in there aside from a little residue coming out of the pulp port. So yeah this unit is going to be quite easy to clean. Um, and you got that special brush to clean the screen when you guys are cleaning it. We're just going to go ahead and reassemble this real quick. All right, next on to the NAMA J2 juicer. So to disassemble this machine, you can't do it while it's on the machine. You're going to have to take it off the machine to disassemble it. Then you can turn this off and we're going to go ahead and open that lid up. And look at this inside this feed chute here or the hopper. There's very little residue left in there. I'd say there's actually less residue in the J2 than in the Kuvings, which is actually quite impressive because it actually has to chop it up and then funnel it in there. Definitely less residue. So that means more of your produce went through the juicer to actually get juice. And maybe that's one of the reasons why the Nama J2 made like a tad bit more juice. Next coming out, we got the auger. As you guys can see on the auger, there is some residual pulp. Um, although I put the beet in first, the beet basically hung around and didn't get... Um, juiced until last because it was the biggest mass that was crawling around or floating around in the hopper. So if you want to, you know, juice earlier in the juicing process, that's why you would maybe cut it up into smaller pieces. That being said, the lar even though the large beet was large and uncut, it did not stop the juicer at any time like it did on the Kuvings. On the bottom of the auger, actually in this case, there's actually nothing left underneath there. There is a little bit of residual pulp on the auger, probably a similar amount that was on the Kuvings auger. Now coming out, they got the screen and the wiping blade. The wiping blade, once again, maybe it looks like it has a little more residue on it than the Kuvings, but this should pretty much just rinse right off. I brush it down a little bit with some soap and it gets really clean. Once again, on the Nama auger, you can see we got some ground in beet pulp because it actually juiced the beet last. Um, that being said, it's not as ground in as on the uh, Kuvings. So this is going to be a little bit easier to clean than the Kuvings, but it does not include that special cleaning tool to clean it. So you will have to manually scrub this. And then actually inside the um, juicing screen, actually it looks a bit more impacted with pulp, has a bit more stuff left over inside there than actually the Kuvings did. And then back basically down to the Nama J2 uh, juicing bowl here on the bottom you guys can see this is going to be more more harder to clean than the Kuvings that was almost a rinse to clean because you got a lot more particulate in the bottom of this as well as some juice and then of course you got that little trap door where you could drop this down you can see all the residual pulp that's just sitting there waiting for you guys to clean it on up all right so there you guys saw what you'll need to clean on both the machines I mean uh, the feed chute on the Kuvings is got, got a bunch of different areas and nooks and crannies, so it's going to be a little bit harder to kind of get in there due to all these little, you know, feed chutes, whereas the hopper is going to be maybe a little bit easier to clean. The screen's a bit easier to clean on the Nama overall than the Kuvings, but the bowl is easier to clean on the Kuvings than the Nama. All in all, I'm going to say the cleaning is probably about a wash. I mean, there's a lot of surface area to clean on this hopper. You also got some surface area here. The auger is bigger there. Auger is smaller here. I mean, you could go either way. I mean, to me, both these machines are about the same time to clean. I'm not a big fan of cleaning like the ground in pulp in the juicing screen on the Kuvings. That's probably the part I hate the most of cleaning a juicer. That being said, once you're over, once you're over that hurdle, everything else is going to be pretty much easy to clean. On the Nama, I mean, just it's a lot more surface area due to this hopper. I basically brush it down with soap and water after every use to make it look, you know, continue to look good and clean. And the bowl on the bottom has a little more resi resi residue, but you could just basically blast water through there. I mean, both these machines, you know, I've timed it in the past. They take me between four minutes, if I do it the fastest, to seven minutes if I really kind of take my time. And every time that I clean is a bit different depending on what I'm juicing. You know, some produce items like, Oranges may not put as much pulp residue and leave all this stuff inside the machine. So, but yeah, in general, cleaning times on both these guys are about a wash. If I said one took a little bit longer than the other, I'd say the Kuvings takes a little bit longer, but not by much. All right, so at the end of this episode, what I'm going to tell you guys, like which one of these two juicers won? That's a tough question, right? While the Kuvings did take less time to juice overall, 
has a more like torquey motor and you have to feed in things manually it did do an exceptional job and got literally almost as much as the Nama J2 it did put more pulp in the juice so if you like pulp in the juice then actually the Kuvings is the machine you will want to buy because it did put more pulp in the juice to give you like a little bit different mouthfeel and texture if you like putting produce in the machine and using it as you're going right then the Kuvings is definitely the machine to buy if you guys want those extra accessories including the smoothie uh, screen that they include as well as a sorbet screen and more importantly the 15 year warranty on the entire machine and the special wrench so that you're not ever stuck in a pickle if should you jam the juicer up you should you will be able to get it apart as well as a better instruction book and the three cleaning brushes that will make the cleaning process just a tad bit easier than on the Nama J2, then you definitely want to go with the Kuvings Revo 830. That being said, if you're like me and you just want to do more hands-off juicing, load up this hopper, fill it up, shut the lid, and hopefully Nama gets the lid thing popping up, fixed, and then walk away, then go with the Nama, right? You're going to have to work a lot less um, to juice because it, the processing blade and the hopper does all the work for you and you should be able to come back with a glass of juice that is already made. In addition, of course, this machine put less pulp in the juice overall by a tad bit after sieving, but not by much. That being said, there is more pulp, you know, small bits of pulp in this juice even after sieving because it actually went through the sieve. Um, of course, this machine also costs you less, but then with a lesser cost, you're also getting lesser warranty. Only two years on the juicing parts, but 15 years on the motor body. In addition, you have a coarse screen to do the fruit juicing, as well as maybe make the smoothies, but you do not have a blank screen at this time the video is being filmed. At a later date, the sorbet screen will be coming out, but I don't know when that will be. And if your machine does not include one, then you have to purchase it separately to have it uh, to be able to do that function in the Nama J2. That being said, no matter which of these juicers you go with, you know this, you guys are getting the most high-end juicers that are being produced in South Korea at this time. And of course, if you guys enjoyed this episode and want to support me and my work, you can use my coupon code DJ10 and you guys can save 10% off, which is a good chunk of change on the Nama J2 or the Kuvings Revo A30 directly at kuvingsusa.com or at nemowell.com. Once again, links down below in the description and the first comment. And if you guys appreciate my videos, I encourage you guys to use my coupon code because you'll save the money. And also, Kuvings or Nemo will give me a small commission uh, when you guys use my code so that I can continue to make these fair and honest videos for you guys, right? So in this test, I mean, overall, if I had to declare one winner just because of the yield and overall ease of use, like like having to deal with straightening out and sieving the juice because I sieve my juice, right? I'm about to say overall the Nama J2 is the one to go with. Just put less pulp in the juice, made a tad bit more juice. It's short on the warranty and, you know, the hopper thing, I love that a lot more than actually feeding produce in. But once again, every juicer has their own pros and cons. And of course, this unit at the time this video is being filmed does not have that sorbet attachment. And I know a lot of you guys want and want to use so for that reason you might want to get the cubing so either of these juicers are going to do great and i hope you guys really enjoyed this episode of learning about these two machines and how close they are in performance and just the minute differences that may sway you one way or the other to pace based on your specific needs and what you specifically want in a juicer once again links down below to save 10 percent on either of these machines that being said if you don't want, want a greater level of service you want to buy directly at discountjuicers.com. When you buy at discountjuicers.com, you can't use those coupon codes, but you will get me on your side to answer your juicing questions after the sale, as well as be your warranty liaison to ensure that you guys get the warranty support that you guys deserve when buying either of these two machines. I have close relationships with both these companies. I talk to the presidents of both the companies on a regular basis, and I always get my customers taken care of when they need it even if the standard customer support uh, you know, that each of the companies have don't take care of you, which actually is actually quite rare. So if you guys appreciated this episode, please help me out and do me another favor by thumbs this video up. That'll help the YouTube algorithm 
push out this video to more people so that they could see the true and real differences between the NEMA J2 and the Kuvings Revo A30. Also, more importantly, please be sure to share this in juicing forums. You know, you may be in a medical medium forum or other Facebook juicing forums where people are looking for juicers. Say, hey, this guy John made an amazing video showing me about the NEMA J2 and the Kuvings Revo. So yeah, just copy that link up below, uh, up, to up top, and then paste that into the forum so that other people could learn about my videos and they could learn the truth about the juicers as well. Also be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you miss out my new and upcoming episodes I'll come out every five to seven days. You never know where I'll show up, what new juicers I'll be testing or comparing or unboxing or sharing and dropping my knowledge bombs on juicing for you guys so you guys can be more efficient and effective juicers and be a juicer for life more importantly like I am. Make sure you click the little bell so you get notified as my new videos come out and more importantly check my past episodes. My past episodes are Wolf of Knowledge. Over 600 episodes at this time dedicated to teach you guys all about the different juicers, comparing and contrasting them and even juicing different items in there. Uh, more than anybody else online. I'll put links down below to videos I've done with NEM including why it is my favorite juicer as well as why it's my pick for juicing fruits. But I'll also put a video links down below to the Kuvings Revo video, the unboxing video I did that was actually showing how amazing this machine is. So you guys could learn more about these two machines. So with that, my name is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Be sure to visit DiscountJuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for our YouTube visitors.